So I've laid some uh, fiberglass matting. Let's get this open, see what we got. So light, it's unreal. <laughs> So, getting somewhere with the front mudguard. All the filler is now sanded smooth. So that looks a lot nicer. Starting to remove the decals off the side. They're sort of one of those stickers which breaks in little pieces. I probably should add a little bit of heat and that would help. So I'll probably do that when I come to do this side. Just a little tip that I, I can't remember where I heard this. I'm sure it was on a TV show. But anyway, it's quite a clever little uh, little tip. So when you have a crack of any form in plastic, even though I will be um, putting some fiberglass behind it to strengthen it, to stop the crack from continuing, you drill a hole at the end of it. And I've done the same because I found... Similar to my red one, there is actually a crack at the rear here also. So you can see where the crack finishes, you drill a hole. And apparently that stops the crack from ever continuing. Even though I am strengthening it with fiberglass, I'm not going to take the risk. So, a little bit of uh, filler. Fiberglass the inside on both this and this. And we should have a very, very clean, crack-free front mudguard current state of the bike I'm yet to uh, sand these down as you can just see here in places just added some body filler just to smooth out any scratches etc my sofa here <laughs> is uh, has now become a uh, storage place for all the parts the wheels have now dried completely I've left these for a couple of days and I am over the moon with how well these have come out, considering I used a rattle can. Really good finish. I always tend to use um, body shop lacquer. I just find it goes on so much nicer than, um, than any other lacquer I've used before. As mentioned, the cylinder head kit, the 70cc cylinder head kit. And... A package from Japan so I have to shout out to uh, a good friend of mine Benny who's been helping me out ever since I wanted this he is amazing at uh, managing to get some bits over from Japan to the UK and that is exactly what he has done one of the things I wanted and to be honest I kind of stole this idea from Benny because in one of his videos he mentioned that they did the Jap clocks with the high beam written in Japanese. Such a small detail, but I'm a big JDM fan and I love all these little add-ons. This one also comes with, I think what this is, is a, uh, a chime for the indicators, which is also really very cool because um, the, the bikes built for the UK, such as this, did not come with this. There's the clocks there. You can see that the chime would sit here, like this one. And you can also see that it now reads in kilometers an hour, whereas this is miles per hour. So we'll have to amend the clocks. But yeah, what a cool, what a cool thing and incredible condition. It's amazing how people can, can really look after things of such age and this was 30 quid which I personally think is an absolute bargain so let me unwrap some of these other bits and pieces I got and show you what I got so we have this which is called a long nose you get different types you can get the ones with the extended parts here to match this but this just fits very simply like that and I will have to mold this and that will not be a problem at all I'll use a bit of filler and maybe a bit of fiberglass but yeah it gives it a 
gives the head like a long nose and I love this look. This is actually a really nice designed one to be fair. It's got some nice um some nice edges to it. A lot of them are quite simple and they're just curved. I like the shape of this one. So thank you so much, Benny, once again. Really nice little add-on. A spoiler. Nicely produced part to be fair. It's really nice quality. So all of this, as I mentioned, was bought from the Japanese auctions. I don't think anything like this is available in the UK. You have to uh, search for an AF09 or a TACT, as that is what they are called in Japan, whereas here in the UK they are Honda Visions, and the chassis is an NE50. So yeah, AF09 or TACT is what you want to search for. So once... These are all uh, prepped and I can just loosely fit them back onto the scooter. I'll be test fitting this and getting this to fit as well as I can. But really happy with that. A big old bit of fiberglass. I love this detail. The little sort of shark gills almost. So what this is, is the lower cowl. And this is what really makes the scooter look properly slammed and once again such a good quality made part no damage whatsoever which is nice so this will be another interesting thing to try and fit and doesn't really weigh as much as i thought either and finally a flagpole So I went for the 40, which you can just see there, the 40 centimetre length. And it may give you a bit of a hint at the livery that I'm possibly looking at going for on this bike. I made this out of a, out of a lip balm. So that will be the topper. So yeah, this sits on the front, on the forks, and just sticks out. And I'll see if I can post a picture just to show you what I mean. And they're so cheap. So Benny grabbed this one for me. So yeah. Another quirky JDM item. So I'll show you how I made this. I'll post a picture of how it was when I, uh, when I first picked it up. But I just saw the Retro 7-Up and I thought, hmm, okay, this gives me a good idea. I like this. So what I simply did is I just, that is a bit of silicon, it's gone hard. But uh, yeah, I cut out the actual lip balm, drilled a 10 mil hole, glued in a 10 mil stainless nut, and that then simply just screws on to that 10 mil thread just there, just like that. Okay then guys. Let's get this open, see what we got. Okay, nice. So, new set of reeds, and you can just see there the jet and some new um, studs. And this is it here. So it's a cast block by the looks of it. Got Molossi written in there. There's the piston. Mm. 
and the pin and the two retaining washers just in there or clips so light it's unreal And just in here is the uh, the piston rings. So I'll remove the original one, give it a quick look over. Hopefully all the bearings are good because I was tempted to purchase a top end bearing, the small end bearing. But if it's all good, I'll get this straight on. So guys, you can see that I have prepped the inside of the panel, ready to take some resin and the fiberglass sheets. Drilled a hole at the end of the crack here, just to stop it spreading any further. And the same just here. With the ratio of 10 mils of resin to a pea size of hardener, I stirred the resin for around a couple of minutes just to make sure it mixed thoroughly. I then applied just a thin layer initially to the panel itself and once I was happy that there was enough there, you want a little bit of overlap, I cut a small sheet of the fiberglass matting and then laid this inside the panel and then you add more resin on top and just make sure that it soaks through as much as it can. Whilst this first layer was tacky, as you can see here, I'm adding a second piece to the bottom and also a third piece just to make sure that uh, it's going to be strong and I didn't want this to ever really have the chance of cracking again in the future. So guys, please don't judge me on uh, my quality of fibreglassing. I'm happy with it and structurally it's solid so uh, I'm really chuffed but let me show you the results. So here we have it, it's been left overnight, it's gone absolutely rock hard. The join is pretty flush which I'm happy with. I've just prepared the outer side and made sure the crack or the two levels each side because I think this side was slightly prouder so I flattened it completely smooth so I can now mix up some filler fill these holes and that crack and hopefully it will be unrecognisable also using a bit of matting and some resin I've made a new tab because this was snapped it should look like that so yeah I'm pretty chuffed with that I need to drill the hole and flat it but overall I think that will work also so I'm happy the front mud guard is done I've shaped the front as best I can because this was slightly flat where it had been scuffed. This is now extremely smooth. This large crack which we had on the side. I've used some filler. And once again you wouldn't even know there was a once a crack. And the same at the back here. And this is the fiberglass. So once again it's gone absolutely rock hard. I did this last night also and I'm really happy to be fair and you won't see this anyway. I'm going to put this in some primer and hopefully with this all being one colour I'll be able to see the, uh, the shape and hopefully I've got it right. But otherwise I'm actually really happy with that and that was a lot easier to repair than the original one with the hole out of it because I would have to shape that. So yeah, we're getting there. Okay. 
Okay, so as you can see, that is now nice and smooth. The crack is filled and it's super strong. So that should not crack anymore with any form of movement, hopefully. So now I'm gonna make a start on the other one and see if I can repair the little eyelet where the two connect together. So I'll do the same with that one. I'll probably use a little bit of fiberglass matting as like the base structure. And then I will use some resin to fill on top just to make it a bit thicker and a bit stronger. Drill the hole and hopefully that should work. So this is the damage in question. It should look like this and it looks like that. So as I said, I'll do the same. I'll put a little bit of uh, fiberglass matting behind. I'll make a little structure on top for it to rest against. Bit of resin and uh, yeah, we should have, got a bit of sanding to do there. But yeah, we should have then two really clean panels. I think there was, yeah, just here, there's a little nick just in this uh, bit of plastic also. And I've just noticed actually this lower, this lower fixing just here. So that's another repair. So yeah, I'll do these little bits and we should have two really clean side panels. So I've laid some uh, fiberglass matting to block off one of the mirror holes. So I'll only be running the right hand side mirror. So I have blocked this off and once that is set, I'll come back tomorrow, remove the tape, stick a bit of body filler in it and smooth that off. So then you'll never know that there was a hole there. This panel, um, as I mentioned, there was a bit of a broken tab at the bottom here. It's not very uh, conventional, but it seems to be working. I've made like a little mold and I've poured in some uh, some resin and that is a washer you can see so I glued a washer underneath which is exactly the same shape that I'm trying to replicate and I've just poured in some resin there on the top so hopefully that will set and I can remove all this tomorrow drill the hole through the center and that has fixed that tab I found a small split just here I don't know if you can see just about underneath just laid a little bit of uh, fiberglass just to strengthen that up also and what I'll do tomorrow is here was the other broken one and as you can see I've also glued a washer to the back and I'll do the same as what I've done here I'll make an unconventional let's say uh, mold and uh, yeah, we'll repair that one also. Okay, so another performance part from the Japanese auctions. But to see what it is, as well as some other bits which should be arriving very, very soon, and to see the updates on the repairs that I've carried out on these panels, you're gonna have to join me in the next video. So once again, thank you so much for watching. And I really hope to catch you in the next one.